Okay, let's take a look at some of those hummingbird images. You'll note as we select the different images, you could see the settings that were used in the metadata browser. Now, these settings may be in slightly different places depending if you're using Bridge or Lightroom. For right now, I'm using Bridge and just taking a look at the key files. You'll note that the shutter speeds are changing here and it really depends on the f-stop that I used. I'm feeling pretty good. I shot at a relatively high ISO of 1250, but looking in the image itself, it looks pretty clean. The trick here is to be able to find a good image. So let's scale the thumbnails up a little bit larger and just take a look through what we have. This looks pretty good to me. Now, you'll note that the hummingbird does indeed move fast. In between the burst mode, the bird went from here to landing. So that was just a split second. You'll also notice in many of the shots that it's a bit distracting because we have bees that were also being attracted to the flower nectar. So I'm gonna to need to work around those or clone them out. Now, as I go through, I see a lot of good shots. And you note that by changing composition and the height of the camera, I was able to move from a distracting background to a more pleasant background. So let's just go through here and look for some. Not too bad, but the bird's a little hard to read with the green wings against the green background. And I love the wings there, but it's too close to the feeder. So as we step through, well, that's great there as far as a crisp bird, but the bird's not in flight. But let's open this one up really quick and take a look at it, and then we'll choose another. So I'll open that in camera raw. And what I'm gonna take a look at immediately is zoom in to 100% magnification. Well, looks to me like we nailed the focus on this one. The sharpness of the feathers is fantastic through there. Now, I will take a little bit of additional sharpening in a moment, but let's zoom back out and just fit the exposure. I'll start with an auto exposure, which pops pretty nicely for the bird, and then simply recover some of the highlights. That's looking a lot better there. The area behind the bird that was a bit blown out comes in nicely. Balance out the shadows, and then back off the exposure just a little. Be careful on clarity. If you overdo it, some of the details will really start to pop. You see that the background there is getting a bit too gritty. So I'll keep that lower, but bring the color up for such a rich subject. Now, I'll zoom back into 100% and take a look at the feathers and the eye. Going over to the Details tab, and again, this is no different than the Details section inside of Lightroom, so it's the same sliders, just a slightly different user interface. I'm gonna drag the sharpening slider over. I'll start by bringing up the amount a lot, and then holding down the option or the Alt key, I'll bring in the radius and the detail, but it's important to mask. You'll notice that the sharpening brought out a tremendous amount of noise behind the bird. Hold down the Option or Alt key and drag the mask slider over. You'll note that this limits the sharpening effect. And now I'm not really sharpening the background as much as I am the edges of the bird, the eye, and the key details in the feather. All right, that looks good. And I'll just back the sharpening off a little bit so it's not quite so intense. Now, just a little bit of noise reduction is gonna clean up some of those areas that were getting really grainy. That feels pretty good. Pull back out. And you see we have a well-exposed bird with lots of detail. Let's crop that. We'll do a nice square one-to-one -one crop. And I'll just focus there on the bird and the feeder, placing it within the rule of thirds there so it touches the intersection point. Feels pretty good. Press return. And from the Effects tab, I'll apply just a slight vignette at the edge. All right, I like that one, but let's try to get one more that has the bird in flight. Let's click Done to store that and continue to navigate through. To make this easier to find, though, I will apply a rating. I'll mark that with four stars so it's easy to locate in the future. Good detail, great focus and exposure, but not necessarily the perfect shot. Well, this one looks a little bit better. And here's the original here. We get the bird in flight with the wings outstretched. Looks pretty good. Remember, if you have a hard time seeing an image, the space bar will take it full screen. All right, let's open up that one. We're in Adobe Camera Raw, which is very similar to Lightroom, and I could tell that the exposure is slammed to the left, a bit darker. So we'll just come on over here and grab the shadows and move them a bit. 
and as I drag on that interactive histogram, the shadows lift. Let's go over to the midtones and really bring those over as well. And you'll note that now the photo is properly exposed. You might recall that it was better to shoot underexposed in this case, so you got nice crisp details on the subject. All right, that feels pretty good. Let's just recover the highlights a little bit and lift the true highlights but pull down the whites. And let's just put a little bit of boost into the blacks there and refine the shadows. All right, that's looking pretty good to me. But before I do any more work, what I'm gonna do here is take a look at the actual image itself. Let's zoom into 100% and see how sharp it is. Holding down the space bar, I could pan over. And the bird is moving quite a bit. So you see, not nearly as sharp as the other photo because this object was moving at 35 miles an hour. But let's see if we could still get an image that looks pretty good. I'll go on over to the Details tab and bring up the sharpening just a little bit and drag the Detail slider over and then Option drag the mask, just like before, masking out some of the background details so they don't come in as much. That's helping a bit. Let's back off the noise reduction and pop back out. Not too bad. I'll open that image and bring it into Adobe Photoshop. That's because Photoshop has a useful filter. Let's duplicate this layer here. A right click and I'll choose Duplicate. And we'll zoom in a little. One of the filters I'm going to take advantage of is the blur reduction. You'll find this here under the Sharpen category and I could choose Shake Reduction. Now technically I wasn't really shaking that much, but the bird was moving a lot. So let's see if this can't compensate. It looks like the details in the feeder are rock solid, but what I'm more concerned about is taking a look over here at the bird. Now if this little window is not popped out, you might notice that it sits over here on the right. You can dictate what it sees by just clicking to set its center point. And then you could actually zoom in to different levels of magnification. I'll work at half magnification here. And now it's just a matter of adjusting the amount of reduction. Make sure you let that finish out and you'll notice here an exclamation point until it's done. Once it's finished doing the preview, you'll be able to judge how much it's improved. Looks a lot better. Now, for those of you who are pixel peepers, let's hit OK for a second. Let's view this at 50% magnification for a second. Not too bad. As I toggle between the before and after, it's got a subtle improvement, looks pretty good. And remember, we can also take advantage of just a little bit of sharpening. I'll apply a slight unsharp mask, but be careful that you don't go too heavy. Remember, you don't want to introduce a lot of noise back in there. All right. A little bit better there, looks good to me. And at 100%, I'm not crazy about the image. But let's take a look at the overall canvas size. Well, unless I'm making a 20 inch print, I'm never gonna use all of those pixels. So let's clean this up a little bit. We'll pull back out, grab the crop tool, and I'm gonna print this at a five by seven. Let's do this particular aspect ratio initially and drag to define the image. All right, looks pretty good. I'll place the bird. And when I'm done, I'll make sure that delete crop pixels isn't selected. Press return and it makes the crop. Now, if you want to remove the feeder from the image, that should be pretty straightforward with this composition. I'll just make a duplicate copy again. This makes it easier so I can show you what's going on. And we'll make a basic selection with the lasso tool around the feeder. There we go. And now I could simply choose Edit, Fill, and use the Content Aware option. If you don't see Content Aware, choose it from the Contents menu. When you click OK, it'll analyze that image and attempt to remove it. Now, it did pretty well, but it didn't get all of it, so let's make another selection. And I'll choose Edit, Fill, Content Aware again. And it's doing OK, but it's trying to bring that back. So if it still latches onto that, not a big deal. 
Remember, you can still make a selection yourself, and instead of using the content aware command, just switch over here to the patch tool. This allows you to drag over pixels you want to use, and when you release, they'll blend in. So if content aware fill doesn't get it for you, you could take care of it yourself. Let's just finesse that a little bit. We'll grab a little bit of pixels with the clone tool. Take a few of those out. Not too bad. And I can continue to refine that as I see fit, but all in all, I'm pretty happy. Just blur that a little bit. And you see that we've removed the feeder from the image. Let's take that full screen, and all in all, I'm pretty happy with that image. I'm gonna continue to refine this little area here to remove the shadows, but that's a pretty solid image, and for a reasonable size print, the hummingbird's gonna turn out. Now, of course, with more practice, and I'm sure if I dig through some more of my potentials, I might find some that are a bit better, but I wanted to show you an image that was realistic. A bird that's flying 30 miles an hour or diving it up to 60 miles an hour is dang near impossible, even in bright sunlight, to get perfectly sharp. What you're hoping for is to capture a moment when they're hovering. And if most of the bird is sharp and crisp, that's great. But the wings are pretty much never going to be frozen, even on a high-quality DSLR.